In Unreal Engine, delegates allow you to make event-driven code. This is achieved by the functionality that functions can subscribe to a delegate and when the delegate gets executed, all the functions that have subscribed get executed too. First, to use a delegate, we have to declare its signature. This basically defines which information you pass to the function that gets called by the delegate, but also you define the type of your delegate at this stage. We can separate delegates basically into four categories. A single delegate, a multicast delegate, dynamic single delegate, and dynamic multicast delegate. For the single types, only one function can subscribe to the delegate. Whereas for the multicast types, many functions are able to subscribe. The dynamic delegate types allow you to use your delegate inside blueprints. With that, let's look at some examples on how you can define your delegates. This is the simplest form of a delegate. This is a simple single delegate that has no arguments. The front part is the macro that you are using and through which you define the type of your delegate. In the inner part, you define how you can address this type of delegate in your code. So you can declare a variable of your delegate like this and then functions can subscribe to this variable. If we want to add arguments to our delegate, we do that at the end of our macro by adding the underscore one param for one parameter and underscore two params for two parameters and so on up to nine parameters. So for example, if you create a delegate with two parameters, you would add underscore two params and then add the parameters after the definition of your custom delegate type. For not dynamic delegates, you just have to provide the data type for each parameter. However, it is common that you add the name as a comment after the data type to make your delegate be a bit more understandable at first glance. Then to this delegate function can subscribe that have the same signature. So in our case, the functions need two arguments with the first one being an F string and the second being an integer 32. If you want to make your delegate of type multicast so that more functions can subscribe to it, you have to add the underscore multicast tag to it. But the rest stays the same. Then if you want to make your delegate accessible from within blueprints, you have to add the underscore dynamic tag to it. However, now you also have to adjust how you define your parameters since now you have to provide a proper name for interactions with Blueprint. For that, you first write the data type of a parameter and then the name of the parameter. So let's look at the different variations for the same delegate for the different categories we have seen before. As you can see, first we say if our delegate is dynamic or not. If not, we just leave out the underscore dynamic. Next, we say if it is a multicast delegate or not. If not, we simply leave out the underscore multicast. And in the end, we define the number of parameters for our delegate. Just be aware that if you have a dynamic delegate that you have also to provide the name for each parameter. Additionally, there's also a way to add a return type to your delegate, but that we will check out in a future video. Now we have the hardest part of the delegates done, defining its signature. For today, I will just use a single delegate for simple usage in C++. But in the future, we will also check out delegates for blueprints in more detail. As mentioned before, we have to declare a variable for our delegate to be able to use it. Next, I have created a small function that takes in a f string and an integer 32 and logs the information to the output log. Now we want to call this function with the help of the delegate. For that, we can bind a function to the delegate. In the future, I will also talk about the different options in specific to bind a function to a delegate. But for today, we use bind you object where we have to provide the object on which we want to call the function on and the pointer to the function. With that, we bound our function to this delegate. Now to trigger our delegate, we can call execute or execute if bound. With the difference being that execute if bound checks before if a function is bound to this delegate before triggering the execution. And as you can see through that, our function gets called by just interacting with the delegate. So for example, with delegates, you are able to create a delegate on your game state, allow different objects to subscribe to it, and then if the state changes in your game state, you can trigger the delegate so that all objects will have to know about this change get informed.
Throughout the video, it should have become obvious that this was just the beginning of how to use delegates in Unreal Engine with C++. In upcoming videos, I will discuss certain parts of the other types of delegates in more detail. But if you already have any questions, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.